Good afternoon, or evening, or morning, or whatever time it is. Should games be accessible and inclusive? Big question, really. I mean, what does inclusive mean? To what extent does something become inclusive or accessible? And according to whom? Can inclusivity be measured objectively? What's the trade-off associated with making games more accessible and inclusive? Is it better to make a game easier on purpose so that it's more accessible? A lot to unpack. And more importantly, a lot of really dumb arguments to refute. And I mean really dumb, poorly thought out arguments. I'm sure this will go swimmingly. I'd like to touch primarily on the gameplay implications of accessibility since that's what actually matters. I think the words accessibility and inclusivity in this context are largely interchangeable. It follows that an accessible game is more inclusive since a greater number of people have the capacity to competently play it. Conversely, games with high skill flaws or high skill ceilings are less accessible because they require a greater level of skill and the capacity to become much better than other people widens the deeper or more challenging a game is. I don't care that much about inclusivity with regards to story and characters, not because I don't have an opinion on the subject, but because the discourse surrounding it is... If you will, imagine the sound of a live squirrel having its intestines removed without anesthetic. Y you got that cacophony of shrieks lingering in your ears? Well, congratulations. Now you know how I feel every time stupid politics bullshit is thrust into completely unrelated video game discussions. Video games are an interactive medium. Much like board games and sports, a defining aspect of video games is the requirement of player input. If a video game can be completed without player input, it's literally not a game. There must exist some challenge to overcome, even if it's extremely trivial, as is the case with certain types of games. There must exist at least some kind of fail state. If you can't fail, then what's the point in playing? I'm certain there are a handful of exceptions to the rule, but there is a rule here. Look, I, I realize it's ridiculous that I'm explaining this. And yet, I feel that it's necessary to expressly begin the video with this undeniable premise laid out, because when I read the plentiful articles on this subject, espousing largely untenable arguments, I get the impression that what I just said, you know, that basic stuff everybody should understand, isn't fully understood by people employed in the field of video game journalism. Yes, I am beating a dead horse. I will bludgeon it, then shoot it, and then carpet bomb it. If we all agree on the opening premise of this discussion, what we can immediately infer is that all video games are inherently exclusionary to some degree. Films and TV shows can be viewed until completion by everybody, even if people extract different amounts of value from said film or TV show. If you sit a child in front of a TV and play Fight Club, they're probably not gonna understand that much about it, but that wouldn't prevent them from being able to see the film to its end because films aren't interactive. If you die of asphyxiation, and like not the autoerotic kind, more like choking on a donut or something, a film is still gonna run to completion. Video games are fundamentally different because their being interactive requires the player to complete them via action. There's a challenge presented from the start and it's up to the player to become sufficiently skilled enough to overcome said challenges. That's the whole point of the gameplay part of the game. And it's been that way since the very beginning. Challenge is completely inextricable from the medium. It's the bedrock of game design. Being presented with obstacles and using the game's mechanics to overcome them is present in damn near every video game that's ever been made. This immediately creates a division between the people who can beat the game and the people who can't. Even if the game is really easy, there will be somebody in the world who is just isn't going to grasp what they're expected to do on a fundamental level. Guaranteed, you've met somebody in your life who just can't do it, be they a parent or a spouse or somebody else who hasn't touched a controller before. The requirement of player input by default makes video games exclusionary because some people will never be able to succeed, and if it's impossible to fail, it's not a game. I mean, right? Or did I finally manage to complete my interdimensional portal and accidentally teleport myself into topsy-turvy land? You know, I had a nightmare about that place once. Ice cream tasted like poop, the sky was orange, and believe it or not, YouTube was being run competently. It took months of therapy to break through the psychosis. When it comes to accessibility in games, the ultimate question is, to what degree should a game be altered or made easier to accommodate certain audiences? I'm a big proponent of creative control resting with the creator, since that generally results in the best content, or at the very least, the most original or inspired material. Most of the best games ever made were created under circumstances where the developer was granted the opportunity to craft the game they wanted, with little regard for how their decisions would be viewed by publishers or market analysts. Demon's Souls was developed as 
an assumed failure and it could be said that as a result from software we were able to make bold decisions and implement new systems without sales expectations influencing development. Nine years later the Soul series is one of the most successful and important video game franchises of the last decade. Halo was developed by Bungie back when they were still a mostly unknown entity on consoles. It wasn't supposed to be the landmark Xbox title that it became at least not in the eyes of Microsoft at the time. I don't think it's any surprise that as a result Halo stood out from the crowd. It was born of a genuine desire to make something new and fun. Nearly 20 years later, Bungie's recent output sucks meerkat dick because Destiny, first and foremost, is a product designed to sell above being designed to be good. And that desire to sell millions of copies has absolutely influenced its development, not just in the DLC and the microtransactions, but the content itself. I'd sooner find myself having fun staring at a fucking glass of water than playing Destiny 2. Video game development, while requiring vast amounts of technical skill, is a creative enterprise, and I think it's very important that developers make the games they want to make how they want to make them. Surely you can understand why I become irked when a particularly loud and presumptuous group of people make demands which will invariably compromise a game's overall quality, often for bafflingly shallow reasons. Difficulty in video games is extremely important because it directly impacts your experience. It's fundamental, unless we're talking about a completely story-focused game, in all other cases, the gameplay needs to be captivating and difficulty plays a major role in that fun. If a game is made too difficult, it becomes frustrating and cheap, but when a game is too easy, it's boring and unengaging. There's a balance to be struck between the two, and whether a developer decides to lean further in one direction or another is their choice. If they choose to implement a difficulty slider, that's perfectly fine. If they choose not to, that's also equally fine. But what's important to understand is that it's not an arbitrary decision. It matters. A lot. I often get the impression that difficulty is viewed as some non factor or something that can and should be altered on the whims of a small minority of whingers. Why this is, I don't understand, but it appears as though there's an overarching insinuation that difficulty in a video game is not as critical as overtly recognizable attributes such as story or level design. This makes literally no sense at all. Difficulty is intrinsic to video games, it's a part of the creative process. Dark Souls, Cuphead, Devil May Cry, Super Metroid, all of these games would be objectively worse if they were easier. Dark Souls Souls world and lore is enhanced by its difficulty. Metroid's isolated atmosphere would be completely undermined if it was virtually impossible to be killed. To suggest that all games should have an easy mode is retarded. Let me give you an example. I love the English language and I adore great writing. One of the greatest things about the English language is its sheer versatility and the range of writing styles it can accommodate. Some books are written in a manner which is very clear and precise, other books are far more detailed and rely on words uncommonly used in the real world. Certain books are written rather elegantly but aren't necessarily accessible to a general audience because you may simply not know what the words mean. And there's and there's no shame in that, you know? I get on people's backs for incorrect grammar and punctuation, but if you haven't heard a word spoken before, of course you're not going to know what the word means. How often have you heard the word solipsism before, spoken in regular conversation? <laughs> With all of that said, if somebody who struggles to read any given book was to suggest that an author ought to dumb down his or her writing to be inclusive of the illiterate or the outright impatient, that would be fucking stupid. Ultimately, creative control rests with the creator and if they have no desire to compromise their vision to accommodate an audience who might not even be in danger of even caring about their work, that's their choice. You aren't owed an easy mode. Nobody would argue otherwise for any other creative medium, but with video games it happens all the time. And of course, these same people who view video games exclusively with this unique prejudice certainly wouldn't have the brass balls to turn around and draw ridiculous comparisons between video games and films. Surely that would cause their self-awareness gauge to spontaneously combust and then shoot itself in the head. You can't compare video games to films, TV shows, or music. Maybe books, since reading isn't a passive activity, but even still books themselves aren't interactive in the sense that you can't directly influence its content. It's all still set in stone. So why in the world do I keep hearing people say, well, I can skip scenes when watching a movie. Why shouldn't I be able to skip levels in a video game? First off, no, you can't. Uh, not in the theater, not when the show itself is being broadcast live, i.e. when films and TV shows debut to the public. 
Second, nobody is skipping shit on their first viewing of a film. You watch a film or a TV show into completion before you start skipping things in subsequent viewings. Most linear games allow you to skip content you've already completed. Perhaps most importantly, how the hell are certain games supposed to implement the option to skip content? I would love for somebody to offer solutions for the new problems such options would present for developers. How are you supposed to manage these options in a 4x strategy game, for instance? How does a Metroidvania game allow you to skip large portions of the game without breaking itself in half? Much of what you need to do in Metroid relies on you having played the game and learned the mechanics up until that point, not to mention exploring the environments and remembering to revisit old locations. Yeah, skipping content is easily done when we're talking about a linear shooter, but what about games where mechanics are slowly introduced over the length of the single player and later sections require prerequisite knowledge? of mechanics. Are you owed all of the content in your game from the very beginning? Should you be able to play every mission in Grand Theft Auto, have access to every weapon, and be able to buy any property you want from the minute you create a new save? Well, that depends on the game, but it certainly shouldn't be the default for every game. Some will say that there should be a choice, but I, I don't fully agree, honestly. If I know that there's an easy way of circumventing content I find difficult, there will always be an incentive to take advantage of that option. That, and it undermines the tension of gameplay, knowing that you don't really have to complete anything yourself. I'm certain that if Cuphead allowed me to skip bosses, that would have happened at least once. I'd rather that not be a choice at all, so that I'm forced to keep trying and get better at the game. Many titles also can't be made easier without requiring a complete overhaul of the game's design. How do you make Super Meat Boy easier without changing literally all of the levels? It's designed around being a one-hit kill platformer. How do you make Dark Souls 3 less difficult without giving the player an insane amount of health, thereby fundamentally changing how they'll approach combat? How does one make Rainbow Six Siege more inclusive without removing certain features or changing the levels or hell, even changing the entire meta? Wait, wh what's that? You think it's possible? Therefore it is? Hmm. Survey says. Oh, In a multiplayer context, inclusivity is something I think developers should really be cautious about because the more inclusive a game becomes, the lower the skill ceiling drops. It impacts the experiences of other people and you're gonna have a hard time justifying that to me. Obviously, there should be a way for new players to get into new games, but it really shouldn't come at the direct expense of the experienced players in a significant way. Remember death streaks in Modern Warfare 2? You think the good players thought that was a dandy feature? Fighting games do this a lot now as well, where your super meter builds faster when you get pummeled. Certainly makes these games easier to get into for novices, but it's not fair. It's the opposite of fair. It penalizes the skillful players, the ones who develop said skills through learning the mechanics and most importantly, through practice. You know, it's, it's that thing you do when you want to become good at something. In these instances, you have to ask earnestly, at what point do we want to maintain the balance? Is the enjoyment for beginners or bad players more important than that of experienced players? Is it fair to give the losing team an advantage simply on the basis that they're losing or should it be possible for them to be steamrolled? It's really easy to suggest that all games be made easier to accommodate certain people, but this kind of thing, taken too far, absolutely ruins certain games. I totally agree with the notion of providing disabled players with options. I think all games should have rebindable controls, not just for the benefit of me or other able-bodied players, but also for players who physically struggle to use a keyboard or mouse or a gamepad. More options in that regard are always welcome. I don't think anybody could argue against that. It's for this reason that I'm largely okay with adjustable difficulty, but it ultimately depends on the game. The invincible Tanuki suit in Super Mario 3D World, that's fine. I mean, I, I beat Mario games on my own when I was a kid, but that's okay. Kids play Mario, so I get it. Fully grown adults don't get to rely on the same excuse. More to the point, for a lot of games, simply giving you more health isn't going to cut it. How can you make an easy mode for Pokemon without requiring significant gameplay redesigns and stat changes? Changes which will bleed into everybody else's experience. How do you make Portal 2 easier at all? Either the levels would have to be changed and made easier, thereby alienating the people who want a challenge, or there'd need to be a hint option defeating the whole purpose of the game. A big part of playing video games is getting good. Games require at least some level of hand-eye coordination, multitasking ability, quick reflexes, implementation of strategy, and practice. You gotta do something, the game won't beat itself. In that respect, video games are the ultimate life simulator. You constantly screw up, and through said screw ups, you don't make the same mistakes again. Unless you're a complete failure at life. <laughs> if the complaint here is that difficult games foster elitism, I don't know what to tell you. Yes, people like to brag about being better than other people at stuff. 
Welcome to Earth, you must be new here. Depth makes things exclusionary, and this can be seen in all aspects of life, even beyond entertainment. A child won't understand the Shawshank Redemption, somebody with no real political conscious can't appreciate 1984, and a sizable portion of gamers, even the self-professed hardcore ones, won't commit to learning games of certain genres. Call of Duty is popular because it's simplistic, the matches are short, the number of options in gameplay is limited, and most people can competently play it their first try. Yeah, they'll get killed by other players a lot, but that'll look like nothing compared to a novice jumping into StarCraft 2 for the first time. Some games are hard, by their very nature. If you find that alienating, look, that's a shame, but that's also your problem. Play a different game. You know what? I'm, I'm proud of myself. We're almost at the end of this discussion, and I only said fuck twice. Fuck, I'm great. Honestly though, with regards to the subject of difficulty in video games, a certain sect of the gaming press has really muddied the waters on this subject, and that grinds my gears. The fact that some really flawed arguments are being propagated routinely by people who have shown nothing but contempt for those they're supposed to work on behalf of indicates to me a clear regress in the gaming discussion. 20 years ago, nobody would have even entertained the notion of making games easier and stripping down mechanics and the defining aspect of the medium itself for the sake of stupid capitulation to those who probably ought to consider a different hobby. You play video games. That means that there must be something for you to do in order to complete it. A lot of the time, that involves overcoming difficult gameplay scenarios. Completion entails catharsis, and that is one of the main reasons why I and people like me play video games. You may not like it, but alas, most gamers do, and in the pursuit of including some, others will invariably be alienated. Google irony. But that's just my opinion. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, or morning.